Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial and I'm going to talk about sample Bezier in well the sample Bezier node in Unity VFX graph and we're going to take it a little bit further than just talk about it we're going to also make some bats following it and we even going to take a little bit further we're going to have a spline control the sample Bezier inside the VFX setup so what you see on the screen this is the what we're going to do we're going to have some nice bats following like this. So if I do this here, I'm going to show you what I've done so you understand what we're going to do. So if you look at this spline here, and if I, let's see here, yeah, this is the one. So if I move this spline around, you see we can control the bats. And we have this tangent handle here, so we can kind of control it so this is super nice and when you do splines you might have more than one segment which means you have like one knot two knot i, I guess you say knot one knot two knot three knot four knots we're only gonna make two knots here because the sample best year is only kind of supporting that i might do another tutorial later where you can um, i haven't figured it out yet but i think it should be possible to have a long spline with a lot of knots and yeah but um, that's out of scope for this tutorial so we're gonna make this work and in order to make this work we need to have a script that I'm also gonna cover how to set it up and the VFX setup is like this so you have they are all following the spline like this and then you're adding a noise like this and if you notice they all start at the center and then the noise go broader and then in the uh, and they kind of go into the center again and this is the travel time so if you do one second it take them one second zero one to go here or if you do 10 seconds you take them 10 seconds to kind of follow this spline so that's how you control it and then you have the here you have the wings you can control the flappiness of them so um yeah this is what we're gonna cover so um it might be six tutorials i don't know it will be some stuff to cover so let's get started and we're gonna start from an empty scene the first thing we're gonna do of course is to make shader graph no of course not <laughs> Visual effect graph, that's what we want, a minimal system. We're going to do create. And the first thing we want to do is to have particles in the scene. And this is the, wow, this is super minimal. Well, that, it's fine. So what we want here, the first thing we need here is to have a spawn. So we're going to spawn and it's going to, be, going to be constant spawn rate. So we're going to have five particles per second. And at the maximum, we can have 50,000 particles. And then we need to have a mesh. So I'm going to have the shader graph mesh. And I'm doing this in URP, so universal render pipeline. And this one needs uh, a mesh. So we have the mesh here. And we, I'm going to have a gizmo instead. And if you want this gizmo, you can find it in the description. Um, I will have the in, yeah, in the link. So you can follow along. And, and it's just a vertex shader. And what's so good about this one is... Oh, I was expecting a particle. So let's do save this one. Oh yeah, we need to add it to the scene, of course. And now we have it here. And let's make the size to one unit. So now we have a gizmo here. And this gizmo is a particle. So this gizmo is just for us to understand what's going on. It's great to have this, this, this one. And then we need it to have a lifetime. And we're gonna start with having like three seconds. So after three seconds, the particle die. So 
3 seconds will also determine how long time it takes to travel this plane. And let's see. And <clears throat> if I take the VFX setup and move it around. So the, sun, uh, the VFX com uh, game object, I'm moving it now. And you see that the particle is spawned at the center of the VFX component. And when I move it, it kind of move around. And we don't want it like that. We will have everything in world position. So now you see the, the, the particle is in the center here. And even though if I move this around, the particles is spawned in the center. So that's good because this is how we want it. So now we're going to do set the position and it's world here. You can see this uh, icon here. That's how you know if it's world or local. And now if we do sample best here. And we plug this one in here. So you can see here, we have zero, zero, one, and we have different values here. So I can explain this, how it works really fast. So we know what's going on. So here you have A, B, C, D and how they work. So let's say if we have, if we want the spline to be like this, in order to have it like this, we need to do, so this is a, so this is A, and this is B. So this is two positions. And if we do, let's say, C and D, you can think them of tangents or magnets. So if you take this one like this, and this one like this, you can think, uh, yeah. So if you do put the tangent here, and the tangent here, so this is, well, actually I did wrong here. This one going to be D. And this one going to be, let's see, B. And this is C. So whenever, when we, when we have this, it's going to be, the line won't go like this. Instead, this is going to be like a magnet. So it's going to be like this. It's actually lurping between A, B and then uh, C, D and lurping between those two. So this is how this works. And this is uh, why we only can use one spline segment in to connect here. So I hope you understand, understood that, that one. And this time here is where on the curve we're going to have it. So you see now all the particles is um, moving, but we want them to be animated and it's pretty easy. So if we have set the lifetime to three seconds, now it's kind of, the particle has an age parameter now. So what we can do, if we do age, now we get the age over lifetime and it's normalized to zero to one. So it's remapped from zero to three to zero to one. And when we do it like this, lifetime will make it be on different positions so this is really good then we can do a little bit more um, space here so we see what's going on and then if we want to have the tangent we do so we do I'm going to do it like I did in the um, example. So now we see we have no, why isn't it working? Oh, it's a bit ton. So here you can see we have this kind of S curve going on. So here we have an S curve and it going like this. So this is super good. But now if you look here, you see the particles disappear and here we see it and it disappear and we see it and that's because this um, VFX component game object it has a render box so you see this render box if we are outside the screen we don't render but if it's inside the screen it render 
So we're just going to make it really simple for us. We're just going to take this one here. We're going to do the size 50, 50, 50. And now you see it's huge. So we just made it simple for ourselves in this tutorial to solve that. So now we always see it. And now we're going to make the forward direction of the particle follow the, this curve. And these particles, the blue arrow here. So let's do lifetime eight, maybe. So to go a little bit slower. So you see the blue arrow here. It's not really following the curve. And blue is forward of the particles. So down here, we're just going to make an orient advanced. And said here, that's a forward. And the tangent of this curve, that's kind of the forward direction. So if you think about this one, if you do the tangent on this one, um, let's see, if we take tangent here, so then it will be like this. If you do tangent here, it will be like this. Yeah, that was a bad tangent, but I think you get it what I mean. So this is the tangent, right? So these tangents, we can read, read from here. And then we just take, put that one in the set. And now the particles will follow like this. See it perfect. And we're going to tweak it a little bit more later because we're going to do some noise and stuff. So, um, but for now, this is great. And the last thing I want to do here is to make some noise. So we want to add some noise to this one. And I'm going to use a noise node because we want them not to fly so perfectly. We want it to fly a little bit left and right and up and down. So what we're going to do, we're going to take the H, well, uh, yeah, the H like this, and then we're going to put it in here. And then we're going to add here. So you, yeah, I guess you could just do it like this. Uh, now we have it noise and actually if we do the frequency so you see now we have some noise here and um but we want them to be they following the same noise so what we can do here the h over line time lifetime if we just do the um, get particle id because we want to feed in different coordinates so if we do this one and add then we add the particle ID. It should be different noise for everyone. So you can see here, there's a little bit problem with this noise. Because they are actually going forward and backward, forward and backwards. They are, we just wanted to have noise up and down and left and right. So we need to use the cross product to solve this one. So to use the cross product, we need to use the tangent here. And if we do cross, ah, so one more time, we're going to have a cross product here. So if we take a tangent in here, and uh, then we're going to have the um, vector three. So here, if we have this tangent here, so let's say this is, um, we're looking from the side here, so it's going down and up and down. If we want to have the cross product and get the by tangent like this, then we need to, to get the red one. First, we need to do the cross product with the, with the, um, green and blue one. And when we do that, we will get the red arrow. So exactly what you see here. So what we're going to do now, we're going to take the blue direction from the line. We're going to make a cross product from the up in the world direction. So that means even though, 
if I'm going to show you. So if we do like this, so this is 90 degree. This one is like 45 degree, but that doesn't matter. When you do the cross product, you will always get the 90 degree like this. So um, if you, so even though we take um, on the, yeah, even though they are not 90 degree angle, this will work. And when we do this, now we get the green direction here. And then we're just going to do multiply. So now we're only going to do some noise in the green direction. Uh, sorry, red direction. So now you notice that they are going bananas. And that's why we need to normalize stuff. So we need to normalize the tangent because it's apparently not normalized. And that's fair. So now you see they are not moving up and down. They are only moving to the left and right. And this is great. And then we're just going to do the same setup with, um, with the up. And when, when we have the up here, we actually don't need a cross product. So we can just um, take this vector here. And then we do a multiply again here. But we, I won't, let's see. Um, I'm actually going to use X here. And then I'm going to use I here. Because then we get different values for, for each axis. And then we're going to add this one too. And now... We have them going both up and down and left and right. So this is perfect. So the last thing we're going to do is to make this uh, H again. Because I want, uh, you're going to understand really quickly what I want to do. Let's see, sample anime curve. Sample curve. So if we plug this one, this one is doing in the beginning, it will be zero of the lifetime of the particle. And in the middle, it will be one. And then in the end, it will be zero again, which means if we multiply this one here. And if we crank up the particles like 30, in the beginning, they will stay centered and then they will go bananas, fly all the way around. And then they will go center again. So if you want to make them to fly through a hole or something like that, you can do it like this. So in the next tutorial, I'm going to address that. The, um, you see, these particles, they are, they are not really following the flow. So it's always, they will go tilting up, tilting down when they go up and down. But now they are always following the tangent of the line. So they look a little bit not so organic. It looks really weird. Birds and bats, they don't fly like this. So in the next tutorial, I'm going to cover how to make them following the flow really nicely. So thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.